All right, what's up guys? Xavier Eon here. I keep trying to shoot this video, but it just keeps turning out laggy. I don't know what's wrong with OBS, but let's hopefully it works this time. So I've been working on dynamic programming. So um, I actually started a Slack channel where we discuss leak code problems based on a certain topic. So this is one of the problems I actually picked and I have an invite link to that Slack channel posted in the description below. So please join if you haven't already and subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already i'll be posting videos fairly consistently so up next we have house robber i also wanted to discuss um dynamic programming real quick i know it's a little bit of a difficult difficult product pro ah, topic so basically we're just storing the results of sub problems so we don't have to uh, calculate them later um, it's mainly optimization over plane recursion, so it saves us runtime, but it doesn't save us memory optimization, so um, you gotta pick there. Um, it's a good topic to learn regardless. So this one reads, you are a professional robber planning to rob houses along the street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security system connected with it. And it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. Given a list of non-negative integers representing the amount of money of each house, determine the max amount of money you can rob tonight without learning the police. So it's a really simple concept. You basically just can't, you're trying to find the max and the numbers can't be adjacent to each other. So we're gonna use dynamic programming to store the sub problems and we can refer to them later to um, save us computational time. So one and three is better than two and one. We can't use one and two because they're adjacent. So, and then two and nine and one is twelve, which is better than seven and three. Very easy concept. So let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna grab the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the length, and then we're gonna have our base cases. So if length is zero, we're just re that means there's nothing. We're just returning zero. And if length is one, that means there's only one house. So that's the house we're robbing. So we're returning that house. And then let's create our um, dynamic programming array. I'm just gonna call it DP and I'm gonna give it a size of length. And then we're gonna have our main for loop. So int i, we're gonna set it to two because we already, or no, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So um, we gotta, calculate the first first um, sub problem DP of zero so this is just gonna be um, numbers of zero because that's the only case and <clears throat> DP of one is gonna be well it can be the it's gonna be the max of either the first house or the second house so we're gonna use the math dot max function nums of zero come on nums of one there you go. And now we get to our main for loop. So we're using two because we already did calculated these two cases. Um, so I less than length, I plus plus. And then we're just gonna calculate DP of I and we're gonna set it equal to, we're gonna use the math.max function because we're gonna compare it to the previous sub problem as well. So it's gonna be, <coughs> um, so we're gonna look back at the two houses back. So we're gonna look, since we can't be adjacent, if we're at one, we're gonna look two houses back to get the already calculated um, amount of money we can rob. So DP of I minus two. So that'll show us 12. And we're gonna add nums of I, which is gonna be one in our case. So it'll get um, DP of I or DP of four is gonna give us 12. And the, we're gonna compare it to um, DP of I minus one. So we're gonna wanna see what this sub, if this sub problem has a bigger solution than this one. So DP of I minus one. And that's basically like the whole problem. I know it's really fast and simple. Um, I'm sure there's more complicated dynamic programming problems. Um, I'm gonna try to get to those later. So, and then we just have to return DP and we're going to return the last um, uh, <clears throat> we're going to return the last dp the index in the dp array minus one so we're not out of bounds and then we just run that code and let's submit it it should work 
Oh, no. Return if length. Um. Oh, it's supposed to be zero. My bad. Well, that was a stupid mistake. Just getting ahead of myself. So let's submit it again. All right, sweet. So like I said, 100%. So it's O of N runtime just because we're using this for loop. But because we're using dynamic programming, we have to store our subproblems into array, which uses memory, as you can see here. So the memory usage is O of N. We're using one array. But um, that's about